Of all humankind's creations and innovations, none captures our imagination and fuels our passion more than a spectacular aircraft. By embracing existing aircraft technology and applying it to a vision of our lives in the 21st century, XTI Aircraft Company is taking a transformational step and creating a new concept for personal air transportation for all of us. In just two and a half years, the company plans to fabricate, test, and fly its first prototype. And once we achieve that important milestone, everyone with a stake in XTI Aircraft Company will benefit. Hi, I'm Jeff Pino. And for over 30 years, I've had the privilege in a leadership role to design, develop, test, and bring to market many new and innovative aircraft. I know what it takes to bring an aircraft to market successfully. I'm convinced that the technology application of the XTI TriFan 600 has the potential to change aviation in the U.S. and in fact the world. All of us at XTI are 100% focused on finishing the detailed design and moving this aircraft to fabrication. The first flight of our proof of concept aircraft the world's first commercial vertical takeoff airplane will be heralded as a major milestone in aviation history. And you'll own a part of that company and be a part of bringing this magnificent technology to market. To those of you who have already participated in this crowdfunding equity campaign, thank you. And to those of you who still desire to participate, go to the Start Engine XTI website and reserve your shares you too can be a part of this major revolution in aviation. You know, aviation enthusiasts have been dreaming about an airplane like this for over a hundred years. And once this powerful technology is introduced to the world, it will be used in ways XTI cannot even predict. XTI is about to place all of us on the doorstep of a new era of flight. And we would like to invite all of you to join us on that journey. Number two. Commercial supersonic flight has long been desired to reduce air travel time and improve personal mobility, particularly for today's long distance travel. However, these benefits have not been realized due to the challenge of a sonic boom. When the Concorde was designed in the 1960s, Sonic boom was so disruptive to people on the ground that a prohibition was soon placed on supersonic commercial flights over land that remains in effect today. This prohibition created an economic barrier that extinguished civil supersonic aviation. Sonic boom reduction has been pursued for many years, but recently, NASA and its partners have made a number of significant advances that bring the goal much closer. New boom reduction aircraft shaping tools have been developed and validated by analysis, wind tunnel testing, and flight experiments. In addition, acoustic studies conducted in laboratories and in-flight tests using special maneuvers have indicated that the boom levels that can now be achieved may produce little or no disturbance to communities. These advances have the potential to overturn the ban on supersonic overland flight, but must be proven outside of the laboratory and off the flight test range. NASA and its partners believe that the time is right to conduct a flight demonstration. To do this, a new X-plane incorporating boom reduction design will be developed and flown. For cost savings, this demonstrator will be smaller than future civil supersonic aircraft, but will be designed to replicate their boom. Flying overhead, this innovative aircraft will produce a soft thump sound in place of the sonic boom. The first phase of the flight research project will validate the low boom design and make an initial assessment of the acceptability of the noise levels. Through cooperation with regulatory agencies and community participation, NASA will use this X-plane for supersonic overflight research, assessing the community's response to the sonic thump, if they even notice. The research generated by this crucial program will create an opportunity to change the rules for supersonic flight taking a giant leap to the next generation of civilian aircraft and accelerating us into the future, quietly unlocking the freedom to travel around the world beyond the speed of sound. Number
Number 4. Number 5 Number six.
Number 7. Number 8 Although it looks like a typical airship, the level of technology in P-791 and hybrid aircraft is quite sophisticated. For example, we use vectored thrusts, much like the F-35. Our thrust vectoring system moves in two axes, horizontal and vertical. That gives us 180 degrees of thrust in two directions. P-791 has multiple lobes. That allows us to generate lift more efficiently. P-791's airframe is built from high strength, lightweight, woven material that's heat sealed together to form an airtight chamber that's mostly filled with helium. On the bottom of the vehicle, we have four ACLS pads. The air cushion landing system enables us to take off and land from remote areas, including sand, snow, dirt, or even water. These environments don't require any infrastructure for takeoff and landing operations. Not only can we take off and land with the air cushion landing system, but it doubles in grip mode, allows the system to grab the ground and hold it even in shifting winds. So we don't need mooring towers or any sort of tie down as we do our change operations on the ground. This vehicle is unique. It's the only fly-by-wire hybrid airship in the world. We have traditional rotor pedals and we have a control stick with pitch roll and alternatively we can put yaw in from the control stick. There's really two areas where hybrid aircraft are most valuable. One is in intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance gathering, because you can fly for a very long period of time without refueling. So for this vehicle, we would take off and land, fly for two to three weeks unrefueled, come back, refuel, possibly change sensors, and go back up again. That allows us to have fewer forward troops supporting the aircraft and also uses less fuel in the forward areas. The second mission area is in moving cargo. People like to move quickly as they're transported, but cargo doesn't matter so much. In cargo applications, the hybrid aircraft is really more like a fast ship than a slow airplane. The hybrid aircraft allows us to carry a wide variety of cargoes. As it scales up from its current size to three times, five times, or seven times this scale, the gondola expands so we can carry two to three hundred freight containers at a time. We can also carry tanks, helicopters, and other outsized military cargo. What's difficult about making an airship isn't the fact that you make a bag of helium lift something. That's relatively easy. What's difficult is making it useful. We've worked very hard to try to make this the most operable system possible. What we'd like to do is take this system to a 95, maybe 99% availability rate, much higher than existing airships, and also as high or higher than existing aircraft. 